Our pace of living leaves us little time for leisure. Our program will give you a chance to experience the fascinating world of traveling, extreme adventures, hunting and fishing. Each week we will take you to the most beautiful places of Kazakhstan. At the end of the winter, we hear more and more news from different parts of Kazakhstan about numerous excesses committed by wolves. Every year, wolves terrorize game reserves. Our small team of wolf hunters have tried to control the number of these predators for several times since the beginning of the year, but unfortunately, we did not succeed in it. On the contrary, wolves seem to succeed in their blatant killing of wild and farm animals. Because of the presence of wolves, the number of wild animals that are prey species for wolves has declined dramatically. Local enthusiast hunters have asked huntsmen to gather as many wolf hunters as possible to organize hunting. We depend on the weather and the weather forecast which predicts snow every night from Friday to Tuesday. On the first day we planned the hunt in Ketman, where we previously hunted for the black wolves. Four wolves from a new litter slaughter their prey here too. We have planned our positions beforehand with the help of satellite maps. The plan seems to be ideal and does not allow a single wolf to escape from the hunting site. Early in the morning, as soon as we have breakfast, we head for the game reserve where horses and our fellow hunters are awaiting us. Today, in our hunt, 10 hunters from the city and 5 local hunters from Sunkar are participating. The organizer of the hunt, Nurlan, will take us to the positions and will define the trajectory for the hunters. Now Kutluk is going to take us to the positions. We will occupy them. Our job is to observe the site very carefully and make an accurate shot. At 7 am, where are the positions? The only thing we have to do now is to wait. Hunting for wolves by chasing them is always exciting and the chance of shooting the animal is slim. The success in the hunt depends on thousands of factors. Some of them are the number and the quality of the positions, the level of the hunter's preparedness and their shooting skills, the landscape of the hunting site, the availability of animals in the enclosure, the weather and many others. We need to measure all the distances. When we have the wolf here, we won't have time to do that. Now I have identified the distance for five or six shooting points. I'll shoot if it appears at a distance of 400 meters. I can't shoot at a further distance. The neighboring hills are 350 meters on the right from me. The positions are chosen well and the hunters are ready. But then we are disappointed with a sudden change in the weather. We have fog from the valley and the visibility is very poor. We have to go down. At the base camp we are told that one of the shepherds have found a dead wolf which was a quite a mature and large species. On the second day, four more hunters join us. The organizer of the hunt is a huntsman from Sunka. Sanat knows the site well and the territory is suitable for the big cordon of hunt. At the top of the hills, the snow has been blown out. 
but the path is filled with snow and is inaccessible. We will try to use chains to reach the foot of the mountains. Above the sands, there is a motorway that is accessible during the whole winter. Sanat assigns the positions for the hunters long before the dawn. At the dawn, the hunt starts from the valley with a wide front. It is always exciting to hear dogs barking and gunshots that echo at a distance. Collective cordon of hunting is the same as individual hunting in that each hunter has to follow certain rules which are quite strict. For example, if I'm cold, I cannot get up from my position to move to warm myself because I may scare the whole pack of wolves and may let my fellow hunters down. Our waiting for the wolves gets tedious. When participating in the cordon of hunt, it is suggested to bring a light sleeping pad, as it is more convenient to lie on it when waiting in a position. Secondly, the animal will not distinguish the hunter's silhouette unless there is thick and abundant vegetation on the hunting site. Also, when lying in the position, the hunter is not exposed to the cold wind, which is frequent here in the morning. For the wolf hunt, I use an inexpensive but quite reliable model of the Remington 700, caliber 300. It enables to aim steadily and make accurate shots at a distance of 300 meters, and I am satisfied with that. In our group, there are some hunters who use more expensive and advanced models of guns. They spend a lot of time practicing shooting. They are capable of making accurate shots at a distance of 800 meters. Meanwhile, we hear sounds of shooting guns. These are raiders who showed up by 11 a.m. on the sandy hills. We have 10 hunters and 15 raiders, 40 hunting dogs for a huge perimeter for cordon of hunting, and no wolf on the territory. We check the surface of the snow for the presence of fresh traces. There is no animal. We thank all the participants and let them go home and our group continues the hunt. We go towards the camp up the road. In one kilometer from the cordon we have a surprise, the long-awaited fresh traces of five wolves. Obviously, the wolves realized they were about to be trapped and ran up the hill. We are amazed that the pack of five wolves repeats the pattern of the escape of the three wolves we previously chased. From the traces we can see that the wolves were not in a hurry and we decide to chase them. We could see that the amount of chasing time between us and the wolves was no more than two hours, so we hope to get them somewhere within the two-hour distance. Adrenaline makes us move fast, and even too fast for the chasing. Soon the exploring group reports that they see a wolf up the slope. Hold on. It's been sitting here. Wait a little. Exhausted and out of breath, we try to catch up with the younger guide. We reach the ridge and realize that the pack of wolves have left far away. We make our last attempt by trying to imitate the wolf howling. But it is a waste of time and efforts, as the wind takes our miserable attempt to attract the wolves to the valley. But at least we know the composition of the pack. The leader of the pack is a mature alpha male, two young male wolves and one cub. We go down to the car and move towards the settlement.
The silence is broken by a wolf howling. Ten pairs of eyes look through the lenses of the optics at the place suggested by Jalin for the stay. We have no doubts that we see a figure of a lone wolf on the ridge from 900 meters from us. 300 to 400 meters. Don't worry, everything will be all right. Shall I go on to the bump? Yes. Almost without any break, the hunters occupy the territory of the perimeter of the pass. Wolves usually escape up the hill. We approach the site from the valley, having left the car by a precipice. We block the way for the wolves escaping. Having reached the ridge, we go up and in 10 minutes we hear a distinct gunshot. In a minute we learn from a portable radio that the wolf is shot. But then we find out that the wolf is only wounded and is leaving the place and we start chasing it. The hunters start to chase the wolves as a wide front and gradually the distance between them decreases. When the sun sets and the horizon is bright, with golden colors, we see a white field covered with snow lit with the last rays of the sun. We have been waiting for this wind for a long time. After the long day, we return to the camp. In the morning, we have to make another raid. Early in the morning of day three, it starts snowing and the fog descends and shrouds everything, making the site poorly visible. We decide to split into two groups. The first group is to chase the pack of the wolves by their traces and the second is to wait for the animals at the path that was previously used for escape by the wolves. We move on to the upper part of the road past an old graveyard and went down to the entrance of the Nazguminsky Gorge, but we do not see any signs of the wolves. Having reached the top of another hill, we see a small post of the rock. In this way, shepherds orientate around the space. The stone post looks like a silhouette of a wolf from a distance, and only when we look at it through binoculars we recognize the stone post. We hide behind the slope, but the wolf manages to escape. Having discussed the best way to continue the hunt, we come to agreement to go on by car on the mountain road towards the Nazguminsky Gorge. The road is rough and our off-road vehicle makes the path for us, but we end up changing our mind as the road leads to nowhere, so we occupy our positions. The beasts must be on the hills. We take the positions. The fellow hunters start their work. Nurlan has assigned the position for us. I am going to my position now. It is on the top of the hill with a good view to the area. The hunt organizers have formed a line in their positions to block this rock massif, a small one that is part of the Ketman Alatau ridge. At about every 500 to 700 meters, there is a ranger, each of them is responsible for their own sector. In half an hour, Jalin says that he has come across fresh wolf traces. Cordoning off is quite intense, but the wolves are leaving the dangerous territory. The fog has gradually cleared and our group, despite the failure, returns in a good mood. The hunt was exciting, 